it's a rare perspective for me as I've as I've in, interacted with thousands of executives across a ton of different industries from medical device, manufacturing, um, pharmaceutical, software, um, a lot, you know, small mom and pop restaurant, B2B, a ton of, in a ton of different industries. The thing that I feel that I don't feel a lot of other people really get is that marketing is pure offense when it's done correctly. It's pure offense. The problem is that most companies only think about marketing when something's going wrong. They only think about making a change in marketing when something's going wrong. Oh, our sales team didn't hit quota for three, three quarters in a row. I guess it's time to think about marketing now. Or marketing's not performing. Guess we need to think about changing marketing. As opposed to if you got to a place where you made changes because you saw opportunities rather than making changes reactively to fixing things that are wrong, that's where companies need to get to. The second problem on why companies don't think about marketing as offense is because they look at marketing in a time window of sales. They think about the offense in 90 days. The real marketing offense happens at month 18, at year three. Growth and things that happen at your company at those levels when you execute marketing for a sustained period of time are unmatched by anything else that you could do in your business. It's called a brand. It's called building a brand. It's called creating momentum. It's called truly transformational change inside of companies for this reason. Also for people's career, right? So you can think about this as a business over a three-year period of time. You can also think about this as your career and the skills that you're building and the things that you're learning and thinking about it in a time window of three years instead of the next 30 days. And so I'll give you an example. I'll give you several examples as we go through this thinking, going deeper into the offense topic. Let's say you're a company in 2016. Um, and in 2016, you basically pretty much every B2B company in 2016 over invested in events, physical events from a marketing budget, 50% of marketing budget being spent on physical events. Um, maybe there's some throwaway digital spend that's not being scrutinized that much. And then it's pretty much carried through outbound partner, other, otherwise sales. So that's your, that's your business in 2016. Everything's go, everything's going great. And you have basically two options at that point. You could say everything's going pretty good right now out here. We see this huge opportunity. People are moving digitally and buying things digitally. They're discovering stuff online. We're not producing any content. All these new social platforms are emerging. Our buyers are telling us that they're learning about things there, but our events are doing pretty good and our outbound's doing pretty good. And we're growing at 35%. That meets our, you know, investment thesis target. And so we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And so they keep doing what they're doing. This is, this is, I'm saying this hypothetically, but this happened to thousands of companies. They keep doing what they're doing. They don't scrutinize the digital spend. They don't invest in any of those things because they don't feel any significant pain. And then COVID happens and COVID happens. Events get stripped right away and outbound sales stops working, stops working as well. Pressure gets put on marketing to deliver things and they don't know anything to do. They haven't figured out anything. They don't know how to produce content. They don't know what channels to put it on. They don't have any followers. They don't understand what to do in a community. They don't even know how to put on an event that people show up to digitally. They don't, they don't have any of these things. And so in that place, now you're on defense. Now you have to go and figure out marketing. That's what most companies had to do. Let's look at it a different way. Let's look at it the way that I looked at it in 2016. In 2016, the, so the signs of things, not the couple things that I mentioned, events and outbound sales not working were totally obvious. It was 100% obvious that when people come, that people that discover you digitally, that come in to buy, have significantly shorter sales cycles, way lower, um, way higher win rates, significantly lower customer acquisition costs, and is just generally more aligned. If you talk to your buyers about their buying process, that's how they wanted to buy. <clears throat> And so these signs were obvious. Outbound was getting less effective. If you actually measured events in 2016, like I did, you would realize how poor the ROI on those investments actually were, but no companies actually did that activity. If they did, 
they would make some excuse. Oh, the conference was in, it was in New Orleans this year, and people must have been on Bourbon Street. That's why they didn't come. And then the next year it happened, the conference was in Vegas. And the, oh, it's because the conference was in Vegas. They must have been on the Strip. And then the next year it's in Hawaii. And they're like, oh, I guess it's because the conference was in Hawaii. People must have been on the beach. Instead of looking at it and be like, this fucking conference doesn't work anymore. And so they're doing, they could look at that and they could say, there is a huge opportunity in digital to do things better than what's happening right now. Nothing in our company is broken. Nothing's going wrong. But look at this huge opportunity over here. We could stop spending $3 million a year on these trade shows that are producing no ROI. Let's start investing those in marketing. Let's build infrastructure capabilities and talent so that we can produce content and capitalize on these opportunities. They go through that exercise for three years. First year, not a lot's happening. They're getting the wheels turning. They're figuring stuff out. They're trying to get the right people on the bus, things like that. They start to hit a little traction in 2017. Things are growing. Marketing's delivering more revenue. You're seeing better alignment with sales. 2018 comes. They really have an engine figured out. They're scaling up media spend. They're producing a video podcast that people love. They're doing things like that. 2019, similar process. And then boom pandemic hits and what happens when the pandemic hits in that situation while everyone else is scrambling in the market you're capitalizing that's when the offense happens for us at refine labs it was three days into the pandemic we host we went to a lot pivoted to live event podcast and we've done 180 podcast episodes in the past 18 months and it has driven our business because we spent three years, I spent, business wasn't in business for three years, I spent three years figuring all of these things out for a moment like that when you can really capitalize. You don't see the things, you don't see the opportunities to capitalize right now. Nobody does. So you need to build the skills. You need to follow what buyers are doing. You need to take advantage of those things. You need to try new things so that you have those So that whatever happens, it's probably not going to be a pandemic next time, but whatever happens, new channel emerges, something, you know how to recognize it and you know what to do. And that's where career changing things happen. That's where trajectory changing companies happen. That's where you're in a race with three companies and you're all at 50 million ARR for who's going to win the category. That's how you win your category. It's big stuff. But most companies don't invest the time because they look at marketing in such a small window. If you looked at Mark, if you, we did that, the example that I just gave you and the company looked at it in 2016 and was like, it's been 90 days. Where's all, what happened in marketing? Where's the millions of dollars of revenue, blah, 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 blah. Like everyone does. And they shut stuff down and they go back to doing all the same dumb shit that they were doing before, as opposed to really letting these things play out. And if you, if you went and got those things to play out, I am positive that if you were one of the few companies that had all of those things figured out when the pandemic hit and you made those pivots, I'm, if you look into yourself, you're like, there's nothing in the company that could have done what we just did over the past two years. New product, new, new VP sales, new sales process, you know, new funding round, none of it. Marketing is something that can make those hockey stick moves unlike anything else marketing's offense hey everyone this is chris walker the ceo of refine labs thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video if you enjoyed it feel free to like comment or subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future we're also live uh, for demand gen live at 7 30 p.m eastern every tuesday night which will also go on the state of demand gen podcast which is available on apple and spotify Thanks again and see you next time.